and welcome to the Spiritual and Empowerment Living with Tia podcast, a sacred place and resource for spiritually centered women who want to go from the mundane to the magical life for overcoming fear and doubt, reconnecting with the goddess, understanding messages from spirit, and uncovering your spiritual gifts so you can finally live the life you deserve. Hello, spiritual trailblazers, and welcome back. I have to tell you, this episode (laughs) is unique of and in itself because I actually already recorded this episode. Upon playback, my project manager informed me that there were some parts that were inaudible. So I don't know what happened. However... There's something to be said about that. Um, I'm so glad that I have all my notes. Normally, I have just bullet points. And then, excuse me, I'll go off the riff from there. This time, I have a page worth of notes. (laughs) A website, two books. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention because sometimes we can have the best intentions to get something done and it doesn't work out. And sometimes it's just part of it. It wasn't a whole episode. And that was about an hour long. So that was an hour's worth of content. I had to re-record. Uh, <laughs> just keep in mind that the redo is your chance to do it even better. And it's not often that people get a second chance. So keep that in mind. And when possible, keep notes. Even when I was in college, and I started actually doing this in high school, uh, I would write a paper and I think this was before autosave, whatever. I forget to save, or it was in between the autosave time frame. My computer would just cut off because it overheated or it would freeze. And now I don't have the information. So I started emailing myself the paper. And it would say update one, update two, update, update. Just keep that in mind as a side note. Okay, or as we call it in the business world, CYA, cover your ass or cover your assets. <laughs> All right, let's get to the show. Today's the full moon. We got full moon energy. There's a lot going on. So uh, without further ado, unleashing your magic part one, and that's magic with a K. Working with the full moon and spell casting. And just a quick note for those of you who are maybe new to this, magic with a K is to differentiate the magic with the spiritual realm, uh, witch magic, all, all, all that type of magic from the magic where you pull a rabbit out of a hat, where you pull the coin from behind the air. That's the indication. Okay. So magic with the K, spiritual, everything that falls under that spiritual realm, magic with the C, you are uh, creating doves from nowhere when it's really behind the cage. Okay. You are, again, putting a rabbit out the hat, things like that, doing trick cards. Okay, we established that. So why this series? This is part one of three. Well, a few things. And and these are the overarching things. And you'll see as we continue on with this series, uh, the other uh, points that come along, how, how that plays a part. So this is about transitions, okay? Uh, We're going to gear up for this. Unleashing was within us, but we put on the back burner because of 2020. And I feel like 2020 is going to be a verb (laughs) eventually. A a lot went down this year, and we still have four months left. So let's get back on the path of doing the things that make us us that... um, that really ignites our soul. I am fully aware of the unfortunate events that happen in people's lives. And I'm definitely not one to take light of that. I have lost loved ones in the past before. And we have to ascertain ways to keep some part of us intact. Okay. And for example, I registered for French class. And that's fun. That's something I used to be at an intermediate level. Um, when my pop-pop died, I had no one 
to speak French with, to practice my French with. So th this is something that is going a little bit back to my roots in a way, my love for learning languages and things like that. So that's something to help me keep my mental sanity. So part of unleashing the magic within is unleashing the parts of you that you put on the back burner, which your magic, okay? And once you start working on yourself, you'll find your spark. You'll find that thing that makes you so unique and your magic, okay? The second point I want to make here is that we need to get into the flow, okay? And in the flow of change because we are in the midst of changing seasons in the Northern hemisphere. We are working our way towards fall. There's about two more weeks left of summer, okay? So there's the seasonal change. There's the calendar change because, again, there are only four months left. This is only September 2nd. We have all of September, October, November, and December. And then there's the change, our, our birthdays, okay? My birthday was uh, August 31st, all right? So I'm entering a new year in my life. So we need to get back into the flow of these changes. When there's a huge disruption, we put a lot of uh, changes that are inevitable, not just on the sideline, but we put it in the shadows. You don't even want to think about it, okay? It's like, why celebrate this? Why should I acknowledge that? Because it's a part of life. It's not going to go away. And there is something to be said when we acknowledge our next year of life, acknowledge the seasonal changes, because we are impacted by the seasonal changes, okay? There's definitely something magical about the fall, okay? Just like there's something magical about the winter, all right? And for the Southern Hemisphere, the same thing. The spring and the summer, there's something magical about that. So we really have to understand that, and, and that's what we're going to do throughout this series. And last but not least, gearing up, getting ready for 2021, right? We will be on the other side of this pandemic. We will be on the other side of 2020, which will be 2021. We will get through this, okay? And we have to keep in mind that, again, January 1st, 2021 will happen. It will happen. So what can we do now to get ready for next year? Because Time does fly. It truly does. I can't believe that August is over, okay? <laughs> My birthday was only, what, like two days ago, all right? So a day, a day and a half, no, it wasn't that long ago, all right? We need to think about 2021. Businesses are already thinking about 2021. They have to. The school uh, system, the faculty members, the everyone else involved, they were thinking about school, back in July, in June, late June, July, all right? And school for some people don't start until August or even September. So we start we had to start planning now. So that's where this magical series came about. I want you to maintain your magic so when life does happen, you have a response for it, not a reaction, okay? We can make room for, for a reaction, but if we stay in that reactive state, we can't grow, we can't really find solutions. So Let's unleash our magic, let's maintain it, and then help it to grow through this series. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm so excited. I have my cappuccino here. So maybe this redo is, it will be even better than, than the first one. <laughs> okay, so before we get started, I want to tell you about a few things regarding September, all right, because this will help you with this, this whole change and understanding process. September is International Self-Awareness Month, International Speak Out Month, International Women's Friendship Month. By the way, check out the previous episode, my bonus birthday episode. My best friend Karen and I came on the show, and it was it's very, it's an informative episode. It's, it was fun, yes, but also it was something that I enjoy doing because it served as kind reminders for people from ages 20-ish to 60-ish, okay? <laughs> Next is on a more 
uh, national scale, self-care and self-improvement month. So just think about these for a minute. Of course, any time of the year, you can focus on self-awareness, speaking out, helping other, others to speak out, but you can go hard on this this month. You can do research. You can set a, a baseline for yourself. So when you do need to speak, speak out and you're uncomfortable, at the minimum, you can say X. All right, and X for you looks different than it does for me. So think about that. Self-awareness, what does that look like for you? Because it, it'll look different for me. All right, and then you can look up definitions, you can look up examples, all that jazz. So I want to tell you about two goddesses. And before I do that, make sure you stay tuned to the bitter end because I have some or some tarot cards I will be pulling for you. All right. So two goddess feast days <clears throat> I want to bring to your attention because I work with many goddesses. I'm learning about many goddesses and um, I want to spread this knowledge. So September 7th is goddess Imana feast day. And I'm practicing on pronouncing her name. There's two other ways to spell her name. So bear with me. Here's her background. Yimana is an African goddess of water. She is honored throughout West Africa and the Caribbean as the mother of the sea and the moon. She is the keeper of the female mysteries and a guardian of women. She aids in the conception of children and their births protecting and blessing infants until they hit puberty. She is a healing goddess showing compassion <clears throat> and kindness to those in need. Yimana is the personification of rivers and bodies of water and is often depicted as a mermaid. Okay, so to connect with her means to connect with fertility, bodies of water, Okay, and I'm going to get a little bit into her attributes. But before I do that, I want to introduce you to one more goddess. And her feast date is September the 8th. And that is Oshun. And she is uh, the Yoruba goddess of pleasure. She is worshipped uh, widespread from West Africa to the New World, where she is honored in Santorian traditions. She rules all bodies of water and all central acts. Patroness of women and witches, Oshun is hedonistic in nature, taking part in any activity and embraces joy and pleasure. Jewelry, perfumes, dancing, and seashells are sacred to her. She is generally depicted as a dark-skinned woman with large hips. She forms a triad with the Oba and Oya, and hopefully I pronounced that right again. Forgive me, I'm still learning. All right, so <clears throat> these goddesses are, should you choose to connect with them and they connect with you, are here to help you in many ways. So you can uh, connect with them for abundance, beauty, like I said, fertility, love, um, if you had to deal with anger issues. So really, I, I am encouraging you to do independent research. That book that I read their bio, well, their brief bio from is The Goddess Guide, and if you look in the back, it gives you attributes of many goddesses. So make sure you reach out to them. There are many ways you can set up your altar to do so. All right. So again, do some uh, independent research to see what sticks out to you and which goddess you want to connect with the most and take it from there. That's how I got started. And that's how I end up learning about more goddesses. The more I connected, the more I learned. All right. Let's get started. Full moon energy. Full moon magic. It is multi-layered. However, there is a way we can streamline this because our connection with the moon is sacred. And when we look up to the moon, to take in that energy, it's one-on-one. -on -one. There isn't any extra things that have to happen. So when I say multi-layered, I mean, you could do a full-on ritual. You can invite people. You could uh, 
work on the ritual a couple of days before the actual ritual. For example, some people um, fast and things like that, but I'm going to keep this simple, okay? We, we'll, we will leave the advanced stuff for later. The full moon is in the zodiac sign of Pisces. So there's a lot of intuition and emotional stuff going on right now, a little more than usual. Now, I'm not an astrologer. However, there are apps and books that allows me to get the gist of it. And I'm going to give you that information. All right. So if you are uh, a Pisces, I know you're probably feeling even more. <laughs> All right, here we go. The full moon in Pisces will help us to dive more into our intuition. And when we do so, there are a lot of things that we need to consider. Our characteristics are one of them. So I'm going to read this passage. All right. So the full moon in Pisces brings up romantic feelings as well as heightened intuition, dreamy and mystical moods, and interest in religion, magical and unknown. And it's one of the reasons why we're diving into spell casting in a little bit. You know, just that magical, the unknown, but it's going to be known in a few. <laughs> All right. People become softer, tender, more sentimental, speak kind words. Now, you may be feeling like you need to wrap yourself in a blanket, watch some movies, retreat, okay? Some other people, like myself, at times, during a full moon, have all this extra energy that needs to be burned. And I don't mean burned in, in a bad, horrible way. I mean, I need to just release this energy. All right, I need to let go. I need to do something. I need to, I need to you know, get out there. I need to do something. And like I said before, and then other times full moon. I don't want to be bothered. <laughs> okay. I just want to be with my own thoughts. I want to watch a movie. It depends. Okay. This is a time we can also start to dive into the hidden meaning of life. And hidden is really just something that's in the shadows. You have yet to tap into it. So when I say shadow or shadow work, don't get afraid or nervous. It's really just something that hasn't come to the light yet or something that we have repressed, put on the back burner, and then it goes into the shadow until we bring it out in the light. All right, focusing on the health, we can feel a little bit more vulnerable. Now, this doesn't mean that we're going to get sick. It just means that this is a sensitive time for us, so we're more likely to absorb energy, okay? So if someone is typically a pessimist, they are a complainer. They acknowledge what's going on, but it's always a downward spiral. Stay away from them. If the TV, the news is just too much for you, dial it back. Okay, this is a time that you just really need to turn down the volume on a lot of things because you'll just take it on at a deeper level. Okay. And it's not good for your health. And that is what will cause you to feel all dizzy because you're not balanced. All right. And if you were to drink, say, coffee during this time, the caffeine will feel like it is more impactful than normal. All right. So let's keep that in mind. And I'm going to wrap this up with personal care. Self-care looks different to different people. Okay, you may go out and exercise, go for a run, and that's your self-care. Someone else may think that you are absolutely crazy, <laughs> all right? Think about what self-care looks like for you and make that your thing for the next couple of days. Remember, we feel the effects of the full moon three days before and three days after. I feel like I feel it about a week before, and other people had told me this as well, that they feel the energy of the full moon about a week before. Some people had different schools of thought about that. I know I start to feel that little weird craziness a week before when I'm usually, uh, or when the date of the full moon is closer. 
All right, so I start to realize my tendencies when the full moon is close. And I realize that those tendencies tend to happen now a week ahead of time, okay? That may happen to you, okay, as you get closer to working with the moon. It's not like I do uh, these intricate full moon rituals every single time and things like that. Your energy is what fuels it. You can have a very intricate, very well thought out full moon ritual where you're diving into your magic. But if your energy is not there, it's going to be weak. And you can have a simple thing, a simple ritual, like a candle, uh, some incense, and your energy is at an all time high and boom, it works just like that. So please do not get caught up with having to do a very well thought out multi-layer ritual for full moon magic it's your energy at the end of the day think about it our ancestors did not have you know the the full-on robes you know and garnish with all these things on there and all it, it was very very simple in the beginning okay now that we got that out the way to un unleash your magic you have to start off with protection i like defensive magic first uh, as I began to learn more, um, I started off with the offense. I was just learning, 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 learning. Uh, and when I started learning, that's when I realized, oh, okay, I need to do some protection. I need to, I need to protect my energy. I need to protect myself from people with just negative thoughts. I need to protect myself from my negative thoughts. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, explain to you some protection spells. Again, we're sticking to the simple uh, spells just because, again, the more advanced ones can require a whole episode, okay? And I want to keep it simple for right now. And to do this, we're going to focus on two protection spells. That's the trade-off. So we're not going in deep on advanced protection, but we're focusing on two spells. <laughs> okay. The two protection spells are centering and grounding. And I always like to look, do a little bit of a backtrack because there's almost always a precursor to something else, to something else. Just like working with the full moon energy, our, our, our full moon magic, our energy could be at a heightened state because of the full moon being at its most heightened uh, level of energy, or we can be in a very retreative introverted mood okay that energy all right so we talked about the use of common sense and that's that's a bit of the precursor to centering and grounding and i say that because we have to first know about our environment so anyone who's acting like an asshole they're not empathetic they just don't give a darn right we need to remove them from our lives. We can't be at a state where we are centering ourselves and grounding ourselves if we're just going to go right back to someone who's a jerk. Now, I get sometimes the jerk is our boss, our coworker, a family member, some people who we can get rid of. In doing this, unleashing your magic, you are adding to or creating energetic blocks that are distancing you from that person. What does that look like on, a, on a, the physical level, the, where our, our, our plain eyes can see level? This looks like you getting a promotion. This looks like your boss retiring, moving to a different section. This looks like your relative who you don't get along with moving. This looks like other people in your, your life sticking up for you and telling that relative to back off. That's how that shows up when you do this work. But it starts with you distancing yourself from people who you can distance yourself from, being in control of the information you receive, things like that, being in control of what you eat. So that's using the common sense part. The protective magic starts with you being aware, okay? That awareness involves you using common sense, all right? Just imagine uh, yourself, um, let's just say you're out exercising you don't shower, you just change your clothes, and then you go to a dinner. 
changing your clothes is not going to make you look presentable and nice because people are going to smell that gym funk, right? And so the most common sense thing is to shower, right? Clean yourself up, do your hair, brush your teeth. Then you can change into your clothes for dinner and go there. Otherwise, it's just like, why, why bother, right? So common sense. All right. Now that we did that we can focus on this, this general portion of protecting yourself. Now, when you're doing this, I want you to focus on what centering feels like for, for you. And I'm not too big of a fan of centering, I'm gonna be honest with you, because centering involves you to calm yourself down. And if you are in a state of anger, you are in an argument, What's the worst thing you could tell someone to do? Calm down, right? <laughs> and the history of telling people to calm down, that never works. So this is something you want to do before you get to that point. So if you know you have to go to a meeting and it's going to be a little tense, what I, what I like to do is I, I say I'm sending my angels before me. I'm sending the goddesses before me to go in that room. What you can do is center yourself before you get to that room. Center yourself before you talk to your child. Center yourself before you talk to your spouse. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is when you focus on your core, okay? Your own energy within yourself so you can be more mindful. Now, this can be you and I have my, my fingers together and I'm actually focusing on my heart chakra so my fingers are literally on my chest where my heart chakra is you will close your eyes take some deep breaths i like to give you options you can breathe in through your nostrils out through your mouth you can breathe in through your nostrils and out through your nostrils you can breathe in through your mouth and out through your mouth okay three ways you can do it you want to do something where you count to 10 release boom so I like to do the Wusa method <laughs> from Bad Boys, if anyone saw the movie, where it's like, Wusa, Wusa. So you can inhale with the Wu and exhale with the Sa. <laughs> I like to tell people this because it's simple, that, it's simple enough for people to relate to. Not simple as a, oh, I'm dumbing it down. No. Sometimes when you tell people, center yourself so you can calm yourself down, again, no one likes to be told to calm down. But if you said, Jenny, Wusa, take deep breaths, Wusa, she might giggle and go, okay, yeah, all right, Wusa. But if you say, Jenny, you just need to calm down, it's like you don't even know what's going on, you know? <laughs> okay, so let's do this real quick. Close your eyes. You don't have to put your hand on your chest or your fingers on your chest, especially if you're in public and you're trying to be a low key witch or low key magical, okay? People can deal with you closing your eyes. They might think, oh, she probably has something in her eyes or something like that, okay? Here we go. Inhale. One, two, three. I'm inhaling through my nose. Focusing on my core. Just picturing my energy level just going down a little bit. And then sigh. Just exhaling all the way out, right? And if you, again, want to be discreet about it because you're in public, just purse your lips, okay? Have just a little opening so when you inhale, you can look down. Hey, look, open up a book, open your phone, pretend you're looking at it because when you look down, it looks like your eyes are closed anyway. So you just, woo, just inhale, think about the woo. And then sigh on the exhale. So you're just inhaling, while you're inhaling, you're thinking woo. Exhale, sigh. <laughs> okay? I like that better than just calming yourself down. All right. Now, these are, again, protective spells. So we're about to phase into the spell portion, spell casting portion. Grounding. I love grounding. Now, this is where you are connecting with the Earth's core. Okay? And this will enable you to balance your energy levels. Now, notice this is the second time I mentioned balance. I try to pick up on certain words that I repeat often that stick out outside of me saying, um, and you know, and so. <laughs> okay. 
let's do this. Grounding. Here's how you do it. You are going to picture yourself with roots and people do grounding exercises differently. This is my favorite one because I'm a, I'm a visual person. You're imagining roots coming from the soles of your feet. And if you're familiar with this, great. Do it again. <laughs> okay. Imagine the soles coming, or excuse me, imagine the roots coming from the soles of your feet, coming from your toes, your arch, the heel, all that. Okay. And going down to the earth. So remember all the layers of the earth we learned in, in grade school. Okay. And then go to the core. All the way down. And imagine the earth core as this warm, supportive, nurturing place from which you can withdraw energy, right? And this energy is abundant. You withdrawing energy does not mean you're depleting this earth energy in any way, shape, or form. So you are imagining energy coming up as you are giving off energy. So the excess energy that you have during a full moon or otherwise is what you're giving back. And if you want to really picture it, imagine your, your energy waves, make up a color, purple, green, red, whatever. Your energy waves just going down, 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 down with the roots. And then as it's coming up, it's the energy from the earth that's coming up. And now you feel even more warm and loving and supportive and nurtured. Imagine that like a hug. When you hug your, your best friend, your spouse, your dog, your child, you know, that's the hug, right? That reassuring, warm, nurturing, loving hug. That's what that's like, okay? You may even feel cool and calm and collective, okay? But this is how we ground ourselves. We're giving off that excess energy because we can't do spells if our energy is going this way, that way, that way, this way, this way, cross, juxtaposing all that other stuff, okay? <laughs> We can't do it. We have to center ourselves. We have to ground ourselves. And when you're grounding, you are actually centering yourself. Okay. I think when we center ourselves, it's just a really quick way to do it when we can't focus on the roots going down. Okay. Another way to ground yourself is walking barefooted uh, in a, like say a park in a grassy area. All right. There are different ways to ground yourself, but that's my favorite one uh, because it's simple. You can do it just about anywhere and it is quick and with the results. Now, we can do a full moon work, uh, ma magical work. Now you can do something called drawing down the moon. And that's just when you gaze upon the moon, you inhale, exhale, this is where that centering part comes along, but you are connecting with the moon, okay? You are just drinking in that energy. And again, you taking in the moon energy is not depleting the moon. You cannot do that, okay? Someone can deplete your energy and you have to fill, or you had to go to sleep, but you can't deplete that energy, okay? This is you just opening yourself to the full moon. You're not really thinking of anything, okay? It's just you being open. Some thoughts may come to mind, but you're going in open-minded. You're going in just wanting to absorb that full moon energy. Now, what if you can see the full moon? What if where you're at, you don't see it? What if you can't make it to the door or the window? A few things. If you can't make it outside, for example, when I had my foot surgery, it was just, it was really hard to be mobile. Uh, I had people open the door for me, or when they left out the house, I can feel that nighttime air. And we know that nighttime air is, is, is distinct. I love it. Try to get the feel of that nighttime air, okay? Especially when it's a full moon. We, we just know it. We just feel it. Open up a window, okay? So even if you can't see it, you can feel it. Think of it like the wind. We can't see the wind, but we can feel it. And that's actually the opener for my first book where I just talk about what you can't see, but what, but what you can feel. Okay, so don't feel bad or like you're doing it wrong because you can't see the full moon. Uh, now, what if you can open up the window or anything like that? Here's where your intention will supersede everything else. 
like I said before, whether you're doing spell casting, whether you are focusing on, uh, you know, activating a charm, whatever it is, it's your intention that fuels it. Okay. You can have uh, a well thought out ritual. Okay. A well thought out spell. But if your attention is not there, if your intention is not where it needs to be and you're thinking about all these other things, it's not going to work. You can do a simple spell and it works effectively. Okay. So I just want to reel that in here. It's not so much all the materials that you had to make the spell. It's your attention that fuels it. You are the spell. You are the magic. You are everything when it comes to this. Okay. All right. So have the intention to connect with the full moon energy. Have the intention when you meditate. Have that intention when you do use full moon magic, okay? You can even get a glass of water and connect with the full moon that way. You can just say something like, when I'm drinking this water, I'm drinking in the full moon energy, the energy of the moon, moon magic, because the moon is in relation to water, all right? So now I want to direct your t- attention to the word spells, spelling. All right. We do this every single day. Every single day we're saying a spell and don't realize it. And the origins of spell spelling have to do with, and again, there are, there are several, I don't want to say several definitions, but it's derived from some from several uh, civilizations, sort of like the pyramids, right? Pyramids are slightly different in uh, different civilizations. We see the original word get not even watered down, just change over the years because you have Old English, New English, you have Australian English, uh, UK English, US English, you know, you have variations is what I'm saying. So that with the fact of, uh, and you'll see this if you haven't already, the more you dive into spirituality and look at the origins, I love learning origin. You'll see that a lot of words, phrases, actions, events, festivals, even gods and goddesses, whatever couldn't be erased was either repurposed in another religion, in a newer religion, I should say, that did a smear campaign on the old religion, old way of life, or they had their holidays next to old way holidays as a way to try to combine the two, as a way to absorb the other holiday. And you see this with Christmas. Okay. I'll leave it at that because again, that is another episode of it in itself. Um, I talked about that in uh, my Halloween episodes as a backdrop. So definitely go back to the Halloween episodes where I give, uh, well, Samhain, where I give uh, the background of that. All right. So we have on the website todayifoundout.com. Quick fact where the word spell comes from. The word spell comes from the proto-dramatic spelling, that's S-P-E-L-L-A-N, meaning to tell, which in turn gave rise to the old English spelling, S-P-E-L-L-I-A-N, and then spell, S-P-E-L-L. The first recorded instance of spell being used to indicate writing or reciting the individual letters of a word was in early 15th century. It would later be given to the meanings incantation, 16th century, and to take the place of early 18th century. We say incantations all the time. We ask people to spell it out. This is back in the 16th century, okay? When I say spells, spelling out incantations, what I'm saying is, We are saying a series of words, right? Repeating words, saying it over and over and over again. When we are wishing someone happy birthday, is that not a spell to wish someone happy birthday? 
Do we not repeat a belief? Oh, I'm gaining so much weight. I've gained so much weight. I am just, right? Chanting, uttering a word over and over and over again. When we say spells, when you look up a spell book, um, uh, when, when you want to say a charm or anything like that, Normally, you get told to say it three times, to repeat it, right? Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Even um, the violet flame decree. I am the violet flame. All right, I am. We are told to say that over and over and over again to magnify its power. That's a spell. An incantation. And we do this every day. Now, sure, the modern definition of spell is to spell out a word, right? Spell protection, spell outside, spell a compound word, right? I get that. But remember, a lot of words, like I said, a lot of words, events, people that couldn't get erased, the definitions got repurposed, watered down, what have you. And I understand over time, yes, certain definitions get added to words. We have the connotative definition and the actual definition. I get that. An example of that is ignorant. Ignorant means not knowing. But the connotative ignorant means, oh, someone's rude. They're mean. That person was ignorant, right? But that's not the actual definition. I get that. I'm telling you this because we do more things than we realize that has its roots in the old way. And by the old way, I mean everything that falls under that umbrella. Paganism, Druidism, or I guess that's Druidism. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, Wicca. So many things are rooted in the old ways, okay? And we just don't know it. I even read about the term honeymoon. What do we do for honeymoon? You go away maybe a week or two as a way to spend the first days with your spouse away from everyone else. It's like a continued celebration, right? You're solidifying the next life of being a significant other, right? The wedding is to have the witnesses there. It's to show in front of God that you're making this commitment and then boom, your new life begins, all right? The honeymoon in old times is when the village would give a a newlywed couple a jar of honey, and from moon to moon, from full moon to full moon, which would be a month, they were able to be excused from their social responsibilities. Honeymoon. Okay? Now, the, the, the road from that given honey to symbolize, you know, all the greatness of being wed to now where we go on trips. I don't, I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that journey happened, but I, I remember reading, reading an article about that and just thought, oh my goodness, that made so much sense. A lot of people would get married during a full moon. I understand that, right? From moon to moon. I mean, how cool would that be now if we were given a whole month to be excused? I think more people would get married. <laughs> But anyway, that's what I want to tell you. A lot, of, a lot of what we do is already rooted in the old ways. Birthdays. Let's go back to that because I just had a birthday, right? We light a candle to what? Make a wish. That's candle magic. That's candle magic, right? <laughs> okay. But what happens? It got watered down over the years, right? The magic behind it gets taken away. And we tell kids, oh, yeah, close your eyes, make a wish, don't tell anyone. That's literally what you do when you cast a spell. You don't tell anyone about it, right? Because you don't need anyone else's energy interrupting that spell. And when it happens, then you say, oh, yeah, you know, then then you'll, you'll teach people about that. But that's exactly what you do, which is, again, so funny to me. But as adults, What happens? Oh, you know, we don't really want to do the candles. You kind of phase it out. 
or maybe if a person is too old, you get the number, right? <laughs> but that's candle magic. Now I want to read you this passage from, and I'll put this in the description, a book called Protection Spells, Clear Negative Energy, Banish Unhealthy Influences, and Embrace Your Power. That's what we're doing, embracing our power, among other things. What is a spell? A spell is something you do with intent and awareness to create change on some level. And it works on the principle that everything is connected by energy. Spells are done by performing a sequence of symbolic actions in the physical world to activate change on a different level. A spell looks to affect a situation by introducing a new kind of energy or by redistributing the energy that is already present. When casting a spell, you function as an angel of change. You actively call upon resources to gather and direct energy. When you cast a spell, you acknowledge that your actions are the ones responsible for creating change. Initializing change is your intention, and whatever consequences follow are also your responsibility. Okay? Spell. And if you ever think, I don't know when I should be doing this, I don't, I don't really understand it. It's already within you. It's already within you. I'm going to tell you something. I have a tattoo in my hands, one of the goddess symbols, the spiral through spirals. I've been drawing that spiral symbol since I was a kid in grade school. I've always been a doodler. doodler. <laughs> so, side note, I have brackets on the back of my teeth, and it's been really interrupting the way I pronounce words. So that on top of my South Philly accent have been very interesting. Um, <laughs> I will always doodle in my notebooks. And when I, many, many, many years later, like two decades later, saw this symbol, I was floored. I can't believe it. Why would I draw that symbol? And constantly draw these spiral symbols among other symbols it's all within us and don't even get me started on past life and cell memory but it's already within us so if you're drawn to something entertain that thought entertain that inkling because it's there your body knows it your subconscious knows it the past life you knows it so let's dive into that all right all you're doing when you spell cast is adding energy. You're creating. We create every day. We create and we transform every day. Alchemy. Food, for example. We will cook an, an egg. It's now scrambled. It's now poached. It's now uh, an omelet. And that's just with food. All the content creators, all the entrepreneurs, they create things that didn't exist before or they enhance something. Okay. Everyone has their gifts. We just got to find what it is and let it flourish. All right? Because everything has energy. And once we add our intent to it, the possibilities are endless. Okay? But we have to make sure that we are self-aware first. All right. I want to read two more passages from this book to help understand how spells work. Because you may be thinking, okay, Tia, I cast a spell. I'm working with the full moon energy. I found something that works for me. What now? Well, everything, like I said, has energy in this world. For example, a desk has energy. It just vibrates at a really slow level. That's why it's dense. That's why we can knock on it. And things that we can see with our naked eye, like archangels, vibrate at a very high level. That's why we don't see them with our naked eye or maybe there's sometimes uh, an instance where something in us is heightened and we can see a glimpse okay but generally speaking we don't see certain things with, with, with our naked eye because it just vibrates higher okay everyone everything has energy the energy is just at a higher vibration all right so when we do spell work all those energies reach out to connect with one another think of it as when you do a spell to manifest the right one to manifest money. Your energy is rippling out there, right? And, and, and this whole web of life, right? And it's going left, going right, all these different ways to help 
bring into your life what you ask for, to help attract into your life what you seek, okay? And that's how you influence that situation, okay? It's the ripples of energy that travels around to connect the, 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 the missing pieces, okay? Now, I want to say this again. You are the most important part of the spell. Okay? You are the most important part. Your action is what stimulates the energy. Okay? I said this before regarding manifesting. Manifesting, the rate at which we manifest is our emotions times our, our thoughts. Okay? So what we're thinking is one thing, but our emotions would take it much farther than we can ever imagine. All right? So that's with this spell casting portion. And I know I didn't give you an exact spell. That's because, again, we are focusing on the basics. Before I can even talk about a particular spell, we need to understand what is a spell? What does it do? What, what does it kind of sort of look like? Again, it's just waves of energy bringing in things, creating things, bringing people and things together to create something, okay? Then we can talk about an actual spell later. However, that does not mean that you can't look up a spell to connect with the full moon. All right, this, for this episode, I want to introduce you to this, okay? Because <clears throat> this is something that you really need to study, appreciate, and respect before you jump into spell casting. Because if you don't, what happens? Your intention is going every which way because you're so excited to do the spell. You can't wait for the spell to happen. And then what happens if it doesn't happen? Or what happens if it takes longer than expected? Well, now you feel defeated. Now you're just like, this doesn't work. There are so many other things going on that you need to, to consider. Like, again, your energy, your intention. Are you saying one thing but feeling another, right? Okay, if the spell doesn't work, how do you know it didn't work? Maybe it's, it's just taking a little bit longer to work because there's some self-work you have to do. Maybe that creation is taking a little bit longer because something has to ha happen beyond the curtain. And if it doesn't work, you got to reevaluate. Maybe there was something you said that needs to be changed. Maybe you weren't feeling right that day. Maybe there's something better for you than what you were trying to bring into your life. But that comes with time, okay? So, again, looking at the basics, understanding the ground rules, get that book, Protection Spell, to help you understand it more. This is an introduction to that. Work with the full moon, okay? I gave you uh, insight about the full moon being in the Pisces zodiac sign. Pisces is a water sign. So, expect heightened intuition, okay? Connect with goddess Yimana and Oshan, all right? And I'll put their feast day information in the description of this episode and the book I used to uh, read you their, their mini bios. And I just say mini because, of course, there's a whole story behind them. That, that book is giving you a bit of a footnote so you get an idea of who they are and, and how you can connect with them. Okay, there's... You want to get multiple books, okay? And I say that because you're not going to get all the information from one book. You can get, you can get a lot of information from one book, but you're not going to get the full picture for many reasons, okay? So make sure you make time to get books to really enhance your spiritual education. And I'll say this one last thing about the moon, because... This is also important regarding origins and words associated. Moon, you may hear variations like moody, luna, loony. Luna also means moon, but you're here, you will hear these variations because people tend to get a little crazy around the full moon, which means that they're just out of source because they don't understand how they are impacted by the full moon. Just another example, loony moon, moody, just examples of how you'll hear 
words try to take the place of people's actions when in fact they're just people who are in tune, they're clear, clear sentient, uh, they're empaths, and no one taught them or they didn't learn about how they, <clears throat> excuse me, so yeah, they just didn't learn about it and no one taught them about it. And that's unfortunate. So I just wanted to also bring it to your attention since this is a full moon and you might be feeling a little crazy, but you're not really crazy. <laughs> All right, spiritual trailblazer. I want to, uh, again, pull these cards for you. Like I said, I recorded this before and it just got really glitchy. I don't know what was going on. Luckily, I remember mostly of what I said. If not all of it, I'm pretty sure I remember all of it. We'll see how these cards. All right. I actually put these cards on up top. I didn't shuffle the deck yet. So luckily these three cards are right here. All right. Let me put this over here. This box. These cards are from the new card deck I just received. It's called Everyday Witch. Tarot by Deborah Blake. And I'm not sure if it's Deborah or Deborah because I have seen that spelling before and, it, and the name be pronounced Deborah. I'm not sure. So again, forgive me, but it is called Everyday Witch. You can't miss it. It's so pretty. These, oh my God, these cards feel so good. The guidebook is so cool. It, it should be like a workbook. It's just, ugh, I can't, I can't even. All right, anyway, <laughs> let me get to your reading. The first card, the fool, and this is a picture of a witch. She's looking very happy. She, she has her arms up in the victory pose. She's on her broom. One foot in the air, one foot on the ground, the grassy area. She's on a cliff about to take off. Her cat is behind her. There's like the sea. Uh, there's a boat below, some birds flying around. All right. What I got from, from this card was that, one, you're not the fool. You look like a fool to some people because they're not getting what's going on in your life. And I mean that with the utmost respect. So they may not say for They may say, oh, she's, she's being a little bit weird. I don't know what's going on with her. Um, <clears throat> but because this is tarot, it's called a fool. She's about to take a leap of faith. But it's not really that great a leap of faith because she's been working on this for a long time. Imagine a plane getting ready to take off. A plane just doesn't take off. It's on a runway. It has to build up you know, to a certain point, And then once it hits that point, then it could take off. Even when it takes off, it's still a glide up into the air, not a straight shot into the air. So that's what she's doing. She's like, I'm ready. I'm taking this leap. I got my cat with me. Everything's good. This broom is here. I got this. Yes. Now is my time. That's something that you're either going through now, about to go through, like you're in the early stages, or it's coming up, okay? That's one thing also expressed about tarot cards, or when I give a reading, is that some people, sometimes people get hooked onto a time, like, oh, well, it's not happening now, it's not happening now. And I always refer to the reading I gave my friend many years ago. It took two years for the reading I gave her to happen. And she asked me why it took two years. Oh, and she got another reading by someone else and they gave her the same answer. I said, because it took two years for you to do what you had to do to get to this point. And I'm not saying this takes, this will take you two years. What I'm saying is don't hold on so tightly to a certain date, a certain time, a certain outcome. And this is coming from someone who's not the most patient person in the world, but I understand how this works. Okay. So if you're not ready to take a leap of faith, not ready to jump off that cliff just yet, with your broom in hand, it's coming, okay? But that being said, you have all the resources or will have all the resources to soar, to fly. Now, does that mean that sometimes you'll fly a little bit low? I mean, you might play something close to the chest? Of course, that's life. You're not going to be in this this prime state a hundred percent of the time and I wish I could say that and I wish everyone's life were fine and dandy and rose colored you know sky and everything like that but life unfortunately happens things happen it's part of life however this is a time where you will definitely reap the benefits but you have to take that leap okay 
And if you're thinking, oh, well, T, I'm not a witch. Well, a parachute, whatever have you, a big old eagle that you want to jump on, <laughs> okay? Now is the time. Don't, don't doubt yourself. To some people, you may look like you don't know what you're doing. As the saying goes, there's, uh, was there, there's um, a method to my chaos or method to my madness. You, you got to go with your own flow. And the cat there is just symbolizing uh, the backup that you have. There's someone who's going to be with you, your ride or die, that's believing in you. And do not discount people who are admiring you, liking you, and rooting for you from afar. Okay? It happens more often than you think. I was talking about this in my previous episode. Check it out where Caroline was on here, my birthday episode. You don't know who is looking to you for inspiration, okay? So even if you have a few bumps along the road while you're flying high, you're still at a better point than where you were before you took that leap, okay? You're letting some of that baggage go. You are diving into yourself and someone's like, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. Oh, and she looks like me. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen anyone who looked like me do that. All right, so I'm just going to read quickly what the, what the guidebook states here. Uh, sometimes you have to take a leap of faith, okay? A dark-haired witch wearing the classic black hat and gown sits astride a broom, about to sell off the cliff into the unknown. And her attitude is joyous, mouth open. Her eyes, okay, I didn't even realize that her eyes were closed. And this is my second time looking at it. All right, the cat knows the journey is unfamiliar and uh, is fraught with peril. So yeah, of course, you're going to have some, some days that you're just like, you want to throw everything away. All right, but he is her ride or die. So this is really about, I'm just reading it up here, about the, the, the ability to make a big decision even if you're uncertain, right? And that hesitation is, is just that little bit of, what, what if I make the wrong decision? What if it's bad? What if it doesn't pan out? Make the decision. You have to take that stance. I talked about that in my last episode as well. You have to, to make a decision, okay? You will thank yourself more for making a decision and taking a stance than to just sit on the sideline and be too afraid to do anything, okay? Uh... Let me see. It says here, while you had to stop considering all the options, listen to your gut and just do it. Yeah. So this card is about, yeah, of course you have multiple options. Yeah. So of course you have multiple options, but don't overdo it. Okay. Don't overdo it. Pick one and go with it. All right. The second card, three of pentacles. There are three people here, three witches, and there's a cat. (laughs) Actually, wait, is that two cats? Wow. Wait a minute. Three cats. Wow. Okay. So when I looked at this card the first time, I only saw the first cat. When I looked at this card the second time, I only saw the first, the the one cat on the bench. And uh, the second time was when I was recording the second half to fix what was messed up with the first recording. And then we found out that there was other issues with the first recording. So I still only saw the one cat. Now I'm looking at it and I see three cats. Okay. So when you are looking at tarot cards and you look at a card over and over again, because it pops up in your spread and you notice one thing. Okay. When you notice another thing about that card that you didn't see the first couple of times, Take note of that. That's important because our eyes go to certain places in the card for a reason. Okay. The fact that I'm seeing the three cats the third time around means that this card is even more important than ever before. This card has three witches, three cats, three pentacles, and they're in different colors. One's red, one's yellow, and the other one looks like it's blue or green. I still haven't figured that one out. Maybe bluish. All right. This is about the people who you trust in your life. This is about 
people who want you to succeed no matter what. This is about different perspectives that can help you along your way. So for example, one pentacle is red. That can be in association with your red chakra, foundations, okay? Yellow is uh, your solar plexus and has to do with your personal power. And blue has to do with your throat chakra and that has to do with expression. And if it's green, your heart chakra, emotions, love. Um, but I want to say that's blue. It's kind of hard to tell. I'm going to say it's blue. It's blue. Actually, yeah, because her dress is green. So that's blue. Okay. Now we have the black cast who are in, who are well, familiar with something that was end up being made up over the years, but uh, they are the, the companions of these witches. And the cats also have a connection to the spirit realm. So there, there's that spiritual backup that's going on here. And they are getting along. The people here in this card is a reminder that there are people who are on your side. Now, there's a woman and a man here. It could be that people on your side are actually a woman and a man, or one per, or it could be two guys, but the one guy embodies more of the feminine energy, or two women. One woman embodies more of the masculine energy. It can mean a lot of things really consider these two people, okay? And the witch she has her head on, she's like the main one here. So she could also be teaching these people something. For you, I want you to think about the people in your lives who are helping you along the way, who are supportive of you on this path, even if you're not diving too much into, excuse me, the witch aspect, but you're diving into your spirituality, understanding manifestation and crystals and moon magic, all that stuff. This is about understanding different perspectives, understanding people wanting to help you, understanding you can collaborate and still be good, okay? Because we're not going to be right all the time, understanding that people have our backs. Here's what the book, book states. Sometimes times are tough. Hang in there. Things will get better, and you are not alone as you feel. Not as alone as you feel. Things to consider. If you feel like the poor witches in this picture have probably been having a difficult time, right about now, it may be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. For a rest assured, there is one. It can be hard, but try to maintain a positive outlook and attitude and have faith. You are not as alone as you think. If this card reflects someone else, then, okay, this is about someone else. You're not as alone as you think, okay? The cats are there. And again, that word, having faith pops up. Having faith when you take that leap of faith. Having faith when you're working with these people. Okay. I'm just scrolling down here. And I want to read the whole passage with you. All right, so think about who are you working with and are you doing your best to be part of the team? Is there anything you can do to make interaction go more smoothly, right? So this is about the people who are there for you and having these conversations. Maybe you're not seeing something because you're focused on one thing, but these people want, want to help you. All right, working together can create something wonderful. All right, I don't want to turn the pages because it's going to get too loud. Last but not least, the four of pentacles. So I actually remember what the book said and what I said. There's a cat here, of course. The went the guy's in like a, a prison, but like a Renaissance type of prison. So there's stone walls, and uh, so the windows are open, and the 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 uh, the wooden block that you would put that you would slide into the um, the uh, the place to hold the door shut is on the inside. So this guy can easily walk out, but he's sitting on a treasure chest of gold. And he looks very concerned. This is about overthinking. This is about being so caught up in what you have that you're not enjoying yourself. You're not having fun. You're just focusing on what if I lose this? What if it doesn't work out? Just all these things that most likely will not happen. So this card is about acknowledging, hey, you got a great gift. Hey, you do have money in the bank where you can splurge a little bit. You can treat yourself. You can focus on self-care. Hey, you do have people who care about you. Don't shun them away. 
don't hoard your money to the point where you're, you're just not using it to help you and your mental health and your self-care or just to give back in some way, shape, or form. Don't let that stop you from living your life. So it's basically the fear of not having enough may be more harmful than the lack itself. And on that note, I just want to wrap up here to remember that you need to enjoy life, okay? We can work on finding balance here. That word balance again. Finding balance where we can detach a little bit from our spiritual education and work, meaning every single day doesn't have to be about you reading a book, looking at movies and stuff regarding spirituality and things like that. Just go out and, and have a drink. Go visit a friend. Go exercising. Go for a walk and just clear your mind because spirituality is deep especially when you start looking to the origins and how things got repurposed over the years and watered down you're going to get a little angry (laughs) so spend some time to just have a cup of coffee and talk to a friend have a cup of coffee and pet a dog you know just something to take your mind off of the world okay where you can be in your little bubble at times until, you know, the whole world opens up again and we can do things <laughs> like we normally would. Okay, maybe you can have a dance party in your own home. Maybe you can paint, you know, something that just distracts you, but in a good way. Okay, like I said, for me, uh, I'm taking French classes again. That is making me so happy. I can't wait to dive into that. Uh, and things are starting to come back to memory, to the forefront. I'm excited about that. So, you know, just figure out some of the things that make you happy to have that little balance. Even if you need a muggle friend <laughs> who couldn't care less about spirituality and is a good way for you to detach for a little while and come back. All right, do that. So I, I hope that was really helpful for you. I know that was a, a bit deep. I know I gave a lot of references. Take your time, hit pause, revisit what I said. Of course, if you have any questions, you can go to my Instagram page, Tia underscore Johnson underscore and and comment on the, the last um, picture. People will send me emails. That's totally fine. You can do that to you at tiamariejohnson.com. I have no objection to that. I am here for you. And even if I don't know the answer or the complete answer, I would give you a resource, right? Because who knows everything? <laughs> Maybe Google. All right. Uh, keep a lookout for part two next week. I am rooting for you. Be kind to yourself. I'm sending you so many blessings until next time. As always, spiritual trailblazer, thank you for tuning in. Do make sure to stop by and visit me at tiamariejohnson.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Last but not least, be kind to yourself. I'm rooting for you and I'm sending you so many blessings. Until next time.